Hi, it's James from the Academy team and you join me to take an exclusive look at the Sony A9. Now, you might think I'm in my living room, but sorry to fool you, I'm actually at Pinewood Studios where I've met up with Sony to take a look at one of only a couple of models in the UK. What we're gonna do in this video is talk you through some of the features you can expect to see on it, some of the new spec, but also I've got an exclusive interview with Jason Lanier, who's had a chance to play around with one. Stay tuned to find out more. So the A9 sits at the top of the Sony range, sitting above the A7R, the A7S, and I guess the question would be, well, why? What gives it that status? Well, the first big upgrade is the sensor. It's still a full frame sensor, but they've put a new type of sensor in there. It's a stacked sensor, and this has opened a whole world of possibilities for the camera. The first one is kind of shooting speed and the efficiency of the camera. It can shoot at 20 frames per second, full resolution. As well as that, it's changed how the camera can autofocus. So we now have a sensor with 693 phase detection autofocus points. That's huge. And it covers pretty much the whole range of the sensor. As well as that, because of this stack sensor design, we've now got the option for silent shooting. And we've had silent shooting in the past, but there's been a few hiccups in terms of perhaps distortion. But because of the way the sensor reads off the image, it's actually now completely distortion free. So, I guess the question is, well, who does this benefit? The thing is, there's something in there really for everyone. You know, if you're a wildlife photographer, the focusing speed and the burst mode is insane. If you're a wedding photographer, well, silent shooting is going to be a massive help, as well as that burst and all of those autofocus points. It's really hard to say exactly who this camera is for, but it's pretty safe to say that this camera would be beneficial to anyone. So there's a whole load of other upgrades to talk about, kind of on the exterior of the camera as well. So the easiest way for me to go through them all is probably to go through them in order while looking at it, otherwise I'm gonna forget some. The first thing we'll talk about then is the dial on the side here. So they've added a brand new dial. This dial has two options on it. One for controlling your drive mode, so you can change between burst mode, single shot, and then the bottom dial controls your focusing mode. So really easy and quick to change between those settings rather than going through the menu like we had to before. Another big upgrade is the viewfinder. So the viewfinder now has this incredible no blackout feature. So as you're shooting, there is absolutely no blackout through the viewfinder. It's really surreal to shoot with, and Sony's actually had to put special features in to let you know you're shooting. So there's a little pop-up icon, or you can make it make a noise, so that at least you know you're taking some photos. Moving on around the camera, we've got this new joystick added on the back. So the joystick is great for moving around your focus points. With all of those, those phase detect points on the back, trying to use a dial would take quite a while, but using the little joystick, you can very quickly get the focus area to where you want. Carrying on around the camera, we've got a new battery. So it gives improved battery life. It's gonna last a lot longer than the old ones. It does mean you're gonna need a new charging system, but our one comes in the box, obviously. Next up, the screen. So the screen now, you've still got your flip out screen that we've seen on the A7s, but they've added the touch screen functionality that we saw on the A6500. As well as that, they've also added the new menu system. So it's a lot easier to get to the parts you want to when you're going through the camera. And finally, on the side of the camera, they've added an Ethernet port. So you've got the feature to stream very quickly from the camera. There's also one other one that I nearly forgot there, which is they've added dual card slots. How could I forget that? It's probably the thing that people have been asking for since ever really with the Sony and the Pro Ender gear. So you've now got dual card slot, which allow you to back up while you're shooting so that you never have to worry if you're shooting that wedding or that event that you're gonna lose your images. So clearly there's a whole load of features packed into this camera and there's a lot to talk about. Now, while I was here at Pinewood today, I was actually lucky enough to catch up with Jason Lanier, who's a Sony artisan from the US, you may have heard of him. But we were able to talk to him a little bit about what he was most looking forward to with the camera and how he thought it was gonna work with his workflow. I think the fact that I have an all-in-one, it's the best all-in-one camera that I can think of. 24 mega, megapixels is the perfect count. It's not too much, not too little, uh, especially the kind of work that I do. Um, the, high, the high frame rate, being able to shoot at 20 frames a second, uh, not having to worry about doing that with a crop sensor is amazing. Um, for somebody like me who does a lot of YouTube and such, having a camera that you can have dual card slots and you can assign one to stills and one to videos is a huge benefit. Um, I just think in general, uh, the buffer on it, the buffer is something that I've actually been asking Sony to improve for a long time. So when I saw them do it with the A6500, I was hoping that they would continue that with future iterations of cameras and they have with the A9, so that's a huge plus. 
Um, you know, there's touch on it. it. There's just so many things about it. I also love the fact that the dials are um, more similar to what I would see with uh, some of my DSLRs, whereas I can change my frame rates, I can change a lot of the different shooting modes and stuff right on top rather than having to go into the menu. So a massive thank you to Jason for your time. Guys, make sure you check out his YouTube channel as well. Clearly he's just excited about this camera as we are, and there is absolutely tons of features to talk about. And you may have thought I'd gone through all of them. Well, actually, there's just three more I wanna mention. First off is the Bions X processor. So this is an upgraded processor, and it's some of what handles all of this new information that's pumping through this camera. Now, for you videographers, you might be thinking, well, can this do anything for me? The great answer is yes. This will do 4K video internal. So you don't need an external recorder and you can benefit from all of those features that are packed into this new sensor. And then there's one last thing I wanna mention, and this one I really love, and it's something called IAF. So it's auto-focusing that will prioritize the eye in your shot. Now you might be thinking, well, that's great, I'm not gonna use that much, but for any of you that shoot portrait work, particularly at shallow depths of field, this is gonna be hugely useful. You know, if you're working with a really narrow depth of field, getting that eye in focus is so paramount to the shot. Sony have also showed it being used in a wedding environment, a sports environment, anywhere where tracking that eye can be challenging. Now there's clearly a lot on this camera to see and do, and the great news is we're gonna get our hands on one soon again to go out and test it in a real life situation so we can really try out some of those features. Other than that, that pretty much brings us to the end of this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you wanna find out anything more, make sure you pop into your local Jessup store or even go on jessups.com. Thanks again.